Okay, so welcome back to the Curious Case of Crafty Hall. Today, uh, we are going to have a look at page 19, and then I'll work on page 20 with you just to show you my thought process and how I got bits together. So, 19 and 20. We are working in this flip-down envelope book. And 19 and 20 are going on this down flip. Let me get up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So the book flip goes this way. 19, 18, 17 and 18 are there. This page flips down. So I'm going to do 19 here. And I've done it. And I'm going to flip up for 20. <clears throat> Um, might have done this differently, but I actually I was thinking of having this over here. But then when I got to figuring out more, I realized that I want to put pages 21 and 22 together. Um, and I don't really want anything like um, this part of the story interfering with the whole new thing. Because this is when, ta-da, the investigators are called and they arrived. And I'm going to need a lot of space there. Um, <clears throat> so here's what I've done um, for 19. Very simple. I just took the tag. The story said Rose shuddered as a stone suddenly dropped to the floor beside her. So I really didn't like the picture that was provided with the kit. Um, it didn't really show quite what I was hoping it would show so I um, tried to find something a little more exciting and I thought that this one of just of the chair sitting there kind of looks like stones there <clears throat> and I will add some uh, little um, gemstones or little tiny grit paste or something after when I continue in doing a little more belch embellishing so all I did on this page was I thought <clears throat> I would use this as a backdrop because it's like little round stones. So I, it's not with the kit. This page does not come with the kit, but it's just a page um, that I had. And um, so I printed it out and I put it down as the backdrop for this page. <clears throat> Zip. And then I um, used the pocket that came or the envelope that came with the page um, and it was with this design on it <clears throat> I took this picture with the um, little chair and I put a skeleton uh, sitting in the chair and I have a beautiful bouquet of flowers up here at the top and I have the story tag right there I have a raven feather and then I have a couple of ravens down the bottom. Now this is the tag that was provided. It doesn't look much different here than there. So anyway, I have a pocket here and I can add this little tag into this pocket along with a little bit, a few bits of other ephemera once I find out more of um, what I want to add as I go through and um, create more. In for interest on the pages once I get all this base stuff down. All right, so um, I've also left um, a lot of the envelope itself showing on this page, and I will create the 19 token. It's created, I mean, I'll punch it out and I'll add that here. So, because this was a collaborative for each day in the month of June um, and somebody was uh, a different page was highlighted and a different um, <clears throat> creative artist has shown their idea on the website um, I thought it would be kind of cool to just make sure that we do acknowledge that and I made these tokens and I put the uh, paste on them and now I'm just cracking them and these can go on here so I might just put that one on like that and just glue that onto there <clears throat> as a little 
note to remind us. And in the end, what I'm going to be doing is adding more information about the story in the pages um, and the more about the creative um, collaborators um, is a, an index or something at the, at the end somewhere in the booklet. I will um, recognize those girls. And uh, I don't think there's any guys. Anyway, all those creators. All right, so that's what we've got going on here. And um, now what I'm going to do here is flip this over. Whoopsie, that was a little tricky. Because these are fairly big flaps. These are six by nine. So I'm going to just put that over. And now we're on to this page. And this is uh, page 20. And it's the one about the kitchen. Horrified to discover several plates and bowls laying broken on the kitchen floor. So I have um, the story. I've taken the two tags that were provided. And I uh, made a score line about a half an inch from the edge. And then I put those, I glued those to the envelope. And I put this piece of wallpaper over top. So that will go like that. Okay, so here is my idea. I got the flooring there, and I've got these uh, creepy ghoulies that are up here, and I'm going to use this as the um, backing and put the doors on, and then the doors can go over top of the ghoulies, and the doors will open. So let me just get all that paste it down and I'll show you where I'm at. So um, I have these die cuts. Uh, some people have been asking me where I'm getting the little ghosts. They're die cuts through, um, I believe it's a Tim Holtz Sizzix die. Um, yeah, Sizzix for some Halloween. So I just folded up a bunch of vellum paper and uh, cut quite a few of them at the one time. Um, what I'm finding is that I thought I could just do them one layer and they'd very be very ghostly, but they're really hard to see. So I'm almost doing two, um, two layers of vellum at a time. Um, so I'm just gonna stick a few of these little scary guys on here. And, um, sorry about that. Um, I'll put some ghostlies on here and then I will show you what we've made okay so here is page 20 um <clears throat> i added uh, a little folio closure here with a rough piece of twine i put the tag on here it said horrified to discover several plates and bowls laying broken on the kitchen floor i've added some of those little vellum ghosts right here and there's one up here as well now they don't stick very well with um you who or any glue that i have found even the matte medium which is supposed to stick everything so anyway these little doors open and i didn't put anything in here Ooh. anyway there's the flooring and these little doors open as well and in here we have some more ghostly skeletons. I'm thinking perhaps they were the kitchen help and they just can't leave. They just want to stay around and rattle those pots and pans. So the doors are hanging off. I may put some brads in here. And like I say, this glue is just not... Um, this vellum just doesn't stick very well. So I just use the yoo and I keep putting it on. And then when they dry, once they are dry, what I have been doing is going back through with the gel pen. And uh, that's kind of hard right now because there's still glue under there. Yeah, I can't do it yet. I'll have to wait. I'll have to come back. But I've just been sort of tracing them around so that they'll stand out a little bit better. I've done that on some of the other pages. So there we go. It was, um, whew, this tag sticks in there. 
Oops. Well, it would be best if it could. And then it goes around the folio buttons and to there. And um, there we go. That's page 20 and page zip and flip. And there's 19. Now, one thing that I've been struggling with is I really wanted to get this included because this is the medicine cabinet with all of the drugs that uh, Mr. Binder has been giving to Alice and Rose to keep them calm. So, you gotta wonder about that. Well, I do. So anyway, I might put that right on top of the bouquet of flowers because I really want to include it. In fact, let's just do it. It's kind of how I, I go, how I roll with stuff is I, I put something down and then it's like, oh, I really want this instead as well. So I put that in there anyway. And um, there's a little uh, skeleton sitting in the chair. There's a couple of crows. So that's page 19. And I haven't got this finished up. Not sure what I'll do with that, but it don't matter. It always changes anyways, because I was going to use these ghostly ghouls. And um, in the end, I changed my mind. I was going to put them inside the cupboard here. I might still do that. You know, kitchens need a lot of help. Maybe the, they're the ones busting up the plates. Or maybe they dropped them by accident, saw something that scared them. I don't know. So anyway, I'll leave those in there, and I will come back to that uh, another time. I uh, want to just uh, let this dry so I can come back and put my little finishing touches on. But there we go. We've completed another page. Now, I've been waiting for this next bit. This is going to be 21 and 22. And this is where, like I said, they call in, they call in the inspectors. And this is the story. And um, there's some letters, there's some other little identification things and stuff. Now I might save these for in the other part of the folio. That's kind of my original plan. plan. But um, there are letters that have gone back and forth asking for um, the inspector's Ernest Bundle, Brundle and his associates to come and help to figure out. And there's the first letter to Mr. Brundle. The, psych the psychical investigators. I wonder if anybody really knows how to say that word right. Anyway, there's our envelope and there's the little letter. So that's to come. And so now, for now, I'm just going to let that dry and um, whew, thanks for watching and see ya. See you at the next part. Um, take care of yourselves and um, thanks for subscribing and uh, loving your comments. I really appreciate uh, any of the feedback. Um, and thanks for taking the time. Okay, take care now. Beware.